Welcome D-Lab everyone. I understand that Fred has a mission for D-Lab's basic training. Let's see what's going on today. So in the box, of course we got Fink. And it appears as though Fink somehow got the cork from my bottle of wine. Now that's mind boggling. But it also appears as though there is a broken arrow in the box now in the Air Force. That would indicate that we've had an incident. Let's hope that this incident did not result in the blowing up of this amplifier. So, here's what we got. Fender Twin reported that it's red plating and it blows the fuse. New caps have just been installed. So, as usual, we have three questions. Three things for you to consider. One, is it bad tubes? Is it a power supply issue? Or perhaps a bad connection? Let's take a look at the amp and see what we can find. All right, we're gonna start with the top side inspection. Now, the owner said that he did install new filter caps and there they are. And thank God he used top quality F and T caps from Germany. That's the go-to caps for D-Lab Electronics. None of the tubes are installed and that's a good thing because what I want to check right off the bat is where of the sockets, okay? So these pins over time will spread and not make good connection so you'll lose negative bias and that would result in red plating. So what I use is a D-Lab Go No-Go gauge. I take a meter probe and I solder a pin from a USA old base, okay? Not the Chinese ones because they are undersized. So this probably came off of a nice old Sylvania tube. And what's nice about this, it allows you to probe the pins, but it also is a go, no-go gauge. So if I were to put this in here and it fell to the bottom of the cavity, I would know these contacts are spread. So I can take this and check every one of these pins. It's kind of like what the dentist does, right? When he takes that little probe and jams it in your gums to check the depth, that's what goes on here. So if it hits here and you have resistance, you know that socket is fine. So I'm not going to bore you with going down the line, but that is what the go, no go gauge is all about. You can build one of these yourself, just scrap out a tube. Okay, bottom side inspection. Now the first thing I spotted, which is really odd, is this input jack on the vibrator channel has a knob on it. So what's that all about? Obviously somebody did a nifty little mod and I've already talked to the owner. He said, yeah, let's get that out of there. So you can see a lot of the caps are the original Ajax types, which is a good deal. He did replace all of the caps, the little 25 microfarad guys go into the cathodes of the tubes and that's fine. Even though they are the IC brand, we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. The rest of the board looks pretty good until you get down here and you're like, hey, look at these 470 ohm resistors on the screens of the output tubes. That guy is crispy crittered. All right. So that must have been the tube that was red plating. So at this point what I want to do is fire up the amp and check for the negative bias on pin 5 of each of these 6L6 tube bases. Alright so you may be asking yourself why is Terry all of a sudden going into voltage measurement of the negative bias? Well here's why. We've already ruled out that the tube sockets are okay. The go no go gauge passed the test on all the pins. We have a fried resistoroid right there, which points at that tube. So my guess is, is for some reason, we lost negative bias on just that one tube at red plated and boom, blew the fuse. So what I'm going to do is bring the amp up on a variac. We're only going to go about half voltage. I don't need full power applied to check for the presence of negative voltage. Now I got my little Hioki meter. I'll zoom in here and let's check for the presence of negative bias. So let's test my theory. 
I've got the Variac set at 50 volts AC, so we're only going to see about half of the negative voltage on each pin. So we'll start down here. There's pin 5 of that tube. Got a negative 22. Negative 22 on that one. Here's one with a baked screen resistor. Hmm. All right, well, here is the last tube. So I have negative 22 on all of the bases. So is D-Lab wrong? I don't know. And you know, I still don't believe that that negative 22 is constant. Let me, let's do a little tap. Oh, look at there. You see that? A little tap test. It's gone. What do we got down here? Still there. Not there. You can see we have an intermittent issue on the negative bias of that tube. And that's why we have Smokey the resistor. We followed the smoke path to the problem. So I would suspect that behind the scenes, so we either have a broken lead of this grid feed or perhaps the 1.5K resistor that's strapped across the socket is cracked. So let's power it down and zoom in and see if we can find the problem. So I'm sure you're on the edge of your seat. You're wondering, is it a cracked resistor or is it a bad connection on the pin of that tube socket? Okay, guys, make your guess. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take my Hioki and measure the resistor below it. And there is our 1.47K. So if I go up here to measure this one, what do you think, huh? Look at there, 1.49K. So we know now the resistor is actually good. So that only leaves one thing. It has to be a bad connection of the wire that feeds the grid of that tube. Let's zero in and see if we can spot it. All right, here we go, guys. It's time to look at the wiring. So here is the grid feed. It goes through that 1.5K resistor to pin 5. I'm going to take my little magic wand here and look. That connection is secure as can be. But remember, we have two tubes that run in parallel on each channel. So there is actually a jumper wire that goes up to this 1.5K on the first tube. I know this is hard to see, but guess what? Right there. See that lead? It's broke loose. That wire is not connected. I don't know how that we didn't see this to begin with, but yeah, that wire has snapped right off. It's a solid conductor wire. And for some reason, it fatigued. Maybe from insertion of tubes and the leads move and over time it broke. But there it is guys, right there. We lost grid to this tube because it broke loose on that one. Once again, a very twisted web we weave when we're working on these tube amplifiers. Sometimes it's not worth overthinking it. This could have been caught on a good visual inspection. And we had the smoke path to follow. So thank you, Fred and Fink, for another great basic training opportunity at D-Lab Electronics.